Hi, I'm Chris Rycroft and welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In the introduction to this unit on optimization, we discussed how it can be difficult to know that a local minimum that we found in a numerical procedure is actually the global minimum of a function. In this video, we're going to look at the concepts of coercivity and convexity that can help us determine when a local minimum is indeed a global minimum. In order to guarantee the existence and uniqueness of a global minimum, we need to make some assumptions on our objective function. For example, if our function f is continuous and defined on a closed and bounded set s contained within Rn, then we know from real analysis that f will have a global minimum in s. So in one dimension, if we look at a function f defined on a closed interval from a to b, then we know that it will have a global minimum. If we look at open intervals, this result is no longer always true. For example, let's look at the function f of x equal to x on the open interval from a to b. Then this function does not have a well-defined minimum in this interval. Suppose we consider a candidate minimum, c, then if we look at the value a plus c divided by 2, then we can find that that value will be smaller than c, and therefore c is not a minimum and we obtain a contradiction. So that tells us that we cannot define a minimum. In this situation, we could make use of an alternative definition called the infimum, which is defined as the largest lower bound of f on the interval. And in this case, the infimum will be equal to a and will be well defined. There are other problematic cases that can occur with open intervals. For example, let's look at the open interval from 0 to 1 and look at the function f of x equal to minus 1 divided by x. And this function is continuous on this open interval. However, it diverges to minus infinity as x approaches 0. And again, we cannot define a global minimum. Another helpful concept for the existence of a global minimum is coercivity. And we say that a continuous function f on an unbounded set s contained within Rn is coercive if the limit as the norm of x tends to infinity of f of x is equal to infinity. Therefore, we're saying that f of x must be large whenever the norm of x is large. And in this limit, we are looking of all possible paths where x can go to infinity in norm. To see why this is useful, let's look at a function f that is continuous and coercive on a closed and unbounded set S contained within Rn. Then in this case, we can show that f will have a global minimum in S. And to prove this, let's start with our definition of coercivity. We know that for any m, there exists an r greater than or equal to 0, such that f of x is greater than or equal to m whenever x is in S and the norm of x is greater than or equal to r. And now let's suppose that 0 is contained in S. And if this is not the case, then we can always apply a translation to our problem to obtain it. And let's set m to be equal to f of 0. Then we'll define y to be all of the x in S such that the norm of x is greater than or equal to r. And therefore we know from coercivity that f of x is greater than or equal to f of 0 for all x in y. And we already know that f achieves a minimum on the bounded closed set defined as x in s where the norm of x is less than or equal to r. And that minimum can be at most f of 0. And therefore we can conclude that f achieves a minimum on s. Let's look at coercivity for a few different examples. And if we look at the function f of x and y, which is equal to x squared plus y squared, 
then this will be coercive on R squared. And using our previous results, we can therefore deduce that we'll have a global minimum, and indeed this function has a global minimum at 0, 0. If we look at the function f of x which is equal to x cubed, then this will not be coercive on R, and this is because f tends to minus infinity as x tends to minus infinity. And our definition of coercivity requires that our function tends to positive infinity whenever the norm of x gets large. If we look at the function f of x which is equal to e to the x, then this is also not coercive on R, because f tends to 0 as x tends to minus infinity. Another important concept for uniqueness is convexity. And if we look at a set S contained within Rn, then we'll say that it's convex if it contains the line segment between any two of its points. So specifically, we'll say that S is convex if for any x and y in S, we have that the set defined by theta x plus 1 minus theta y for all theta between 0 and 1 is contained within S. Similarly, we can define convexity for a function from S, which is a subset of Rn, to R. And we'll say that F is convex if its graph along any line segment in S is on or below the chord connecting the two function values. And mathematically, we'll say that f is convex if for any x and y in S and for any theta in the open interval from 0 to 1, we have that f of theta x plus 1 minus theta y is less than or equal to theta times f of x plus 1 minus theta times f of y. And we can make an alternative definition of strict convexity by replacing the less than or equal in this definition with a strictly less than. So let's take a look at a few different examples. If we look at this parabola, then this will be strictly convex, and any chord that we draw between two points will be above the parabola. If we look at this function, then this will not be convex and we can find a chord that will be below the function. If we look at this function, which is made of line segments, then this will be convex, but it won't be strictly convex. And if we chose two points x and y that are on the same line segment, then we'll see that the strict inequality in the strictly convex definition will be violated. So let's now take a look at establishing an important result for convex functions. Let's now look at the connection between convexity and global minima. And we have the following result. If f is a convex function on a convex set S, then any local minimum must be a global minimum. And let's look at proving this result. So let's suppose that x is a local minimum. Then we have that f of x is less than or equal to f of y for y contained within b x epsilon and here b x epsilon is the ball of radius epsilon surrounding x. So this is defined as the set of y in S such that the norm of y minus x is less than or equal to epsilon. So we could draw out the following picture. We have our point x and there is some neighborhood surrounding it where x is a local minimum.
So we're going to prove this result using contradiction. So let's suppose that x is not a global minimum. then there will exist a w in s such that f of w is less than f of x. And so we could draw w on this picture and we could draw this at some other point in our domain. And we have then that the function value at w is less than the function value at x. So now let's make use of our convexity property. So we know that for theta in the range from 0 to 1, we have that f of theta x plus 1 minus theta w is less than or equal to theta f of x plus 1 minus theta f of w. And that tells us that if we were to draw a chord from x to w, then we know that our function has to be below this chord. So let's now take sigma small enough that we can find a point along this chord that is contained within this region B x epsilon. So let sigma be in the range from 0 to 1. so that the point z, which is equal to sigma x plus 1 minus sigma w, is contained within b x epsilon. So that gives us now a new point here, z, that is somewhere in this range. And we can see how this will give a contradiction. We know that our function has to be smaller than the position on this chord, and that is inconsistent with this local minimum. So mathematically, we can write that f of z is less than or equal to sigma f of x plus 1 minus sigma f of w. And using our property that f of w is less than f of x, we can say that this will be less than sigma f of x plus 1 minus sigma f of x. And that will be equal to f of x. And this contradicts that f of x is a local minimum, since it violates the property that we started with. Hence, the initial assumption must be incorrect, and we know then that we cannot have w in s such that f of w is less than f of x. And that then implies that x is a global minimum.
It's worth noting that convexity does not guarantee the uniqueness of a global minimum. And in particular, a convex function can have a horizontal section where all of the function values are the same. And this will be similar to the example that we looked at that was made of line segments. If we have a function f that is strictly convex on a convex set S, then in that case we can deduce that a local minimum of f will be the unique global minimum. And optimization of convex functions over convex sets is referred to as convex optimization, and this is an important subfield of optimization.